the rules of it, I, I don't like being told what to do um, at all, I'm, unless it's my wife. I do whatever comes through the door that has a black outline and gets me paid. I'm a street shop artist. I do everything. I want to do a f***ing portrait, though. In New York, we have a saying like, you know, my style is whatever my hands call for. I don't have a style. That's the whole thing. You know, say there's, there's a lot of things I can't do. There's a couple things I can do. But I also will try anything. I mean, when I started tattooing, we did everything. We did, you know, traditional. We did flash. We did lettering. We did anything that came through the door. You know, a lot of tattoo artists, they start working for somebody and the, the owner or the boss is telling them, you need to do whatever comes through the door because they got bills to pay. It is a good practice to learn the fundamentals and build yourself up from traditional to the next steps, all black, you know, things like that. If you're doing different tattoos every day, you're, you're definitely learning a, like multiple regions yeah. of styles. Um, and that's what excites me about tattooing is the fact that you're learning all the time. I just like being out of my comfort zone because mm. I feel like it makes it fun. I feel like my style chose me because it was what I accelerated at and what people wanted to get done from me. I do realism, um, but you know, I like doing lots of different styles if I can, but I'm asked predominantly to do like botanical realism. Um, I fell in love with it at random, to be honest. I was taught in the traditional way. Everyone in my studio did neo-traditional and I was, you know, trying to be a neo-trad artist, which did not work out well for me. And I did my first portrait and then people just started wanting to get that. And then I decided, hey, I wanted to try a color portrait. And then I started doing that. And the other stuff just kind of pushed to the side because people started booking me for the stuff they see me excel at. It's hard to just throw yourself into a box because so many people are in a specialist category that I think if you was to become part of the specialist category, you limit yourself on what works coming in. I think you have all kinds of reasons because some, uh, for someone choosing a style. One would be that adds to the personality and in other cases, maybe others don't have too much of a personality and they choose whatever style is cool or trending. And then there's like the third part of people who are actually like forcingly looking for a style. I just went through like an exploratory period where I tried all different styles that I could and I was still pretty new. I was only like maybe four years in. I do black and gray realism, uh, mainly portraits. But when I started tattooing, I was doing like all kinds of sh You know, you're, you're trying and you're experimenting to see where you're gonna kind of go into. And for a while I was doing color, like new school sh One until I felt like I had enough um, knowledge of the, the, the technical aspect on how to actually accomplish a portrait. Because I feel like it's not really something you can just start doing and then y'all googly-eyed and shit. You know what I mean? No one wants a fucking googly-eyed portrait. <laughs> you know this one for sure. Black and gray realism. Say it with confidence. Black. Let them know. Come on, you say it with confidence. Let you them know. know. Black and gray. I do black and gray realism. Black and gray realism for sure. I guess you could call it black and gray surrealism. I've always come from a background of just doing render art. So I've drawn from like anime, photos, real life, and just doing pencil and charcoal drawings, transitioning into black and gray realism was just very natural for me. I, I specialize in black and gray realism. And I just believe that was the, from the normal American society, that was the most pure form of art growing up. Like we would draw on paper with pencil during school and we would rather, we would do lettering, we would do faces, we would just draw that. And I think that's the closest thing to those back in the day, that feeling of drawing on the back of your fucking test in class. Yep. Like that's the closest thing to that. And so it really gives us a home feeling. I think that's why I ended, ended up doing that and going that direction. After I saw a few black and gray pieces that were done by, you know, really good black and gray tattoo artists, but I seen them healed and I was just very disappointed. I was like, oh my gosh, it's very blurry and it's not like, it just looks like some edges should have been sharper or these blacks should have been blacker and stuff. And slowly but surely, you know, through people that I've worked with and stuff that had really solid styles, I just kind of accumulated all these ideas together into being like what I call the most solid form of black and gray realism. I just like them because those are, those are the tattoos to me that like look like tattoos. Um, 
I think you can like see them from across the room. You don't have to be like right up on it to to see what it is. I like the high high contrast in it, and I think they all age well. So those are the kinds that I like to do the most. I actually used to really be in love with the Japanese because I used to love drawing it. Like drawing Japanese style tattoos is amazing. And then I tried to tattoo it, and I just hated packing color. You know, it was just f***ing boring as shit. I have a really heavy Japanese influence. I'm really inspired by it. Like most of my tattoos are Japanese. Um, but I can't say I like follow the guidelines. I'm not like properly trained in that, so I don't want no shame on my part. I, I, I call it Japanese or Asian influenced with my little white boy twist, you know what I mean? Like I love doing big body work. Like tomorrow I'm doing a full back, rear end, back down of the legs. The characters that are ancient from Japan have been around for thousands of years. So they lend themselves to wrap around the body and look visually dynamic from all angles a lot better. We don't have too many things in American culture like eagles and stuff that wrap well around the leg or the body. So that's one of the reasons why I like doing that work. I've done you know Japanese color traditional work, lettering in the beginning too, but over the years it just developed where um, just now I'm, I'm breaking you know 10 years of tattooing and I've just been so focused on the fundamentals and you know black and gray and contrast and composition where now I think I'm in the same realm with a lot of artists who started with realism where you're kind of ready to move forward and break through that next level of you know, creativity. Um, I don't always want to do realism. I want to get to that next point and I don't want to set or dictate where that goes. I've kind of moved into you know, a more of a surreal, realistic type of uh, subject matter and style. Going through art school, a, a lot of the focus was a little bit more on realism and representational artwork, naturalistic artwork. And coming back into tattooing, I really wanted to be able to apply that skill set and uh, all the knowledge that I had learned you know, throughout those years. Um, so I think that's kind of why I've gravitated towards a little more figurative, surreal kind of uh, uh, of a style. I mostly just say like abstract black work. Lately I've been going more away from the geometry, more into just true weirdness. I think like I just, I've always been into abstract art and I really like stuff that's kind of nonsensical. It's not a thing, it's just eye candy. I don't know, there's a sense of pride that you get from drawing something that doesn't really exist anywhere else except in that moment. Well, I mean, obviously, the further you get from normal, the less amount of people that want to get tattooed by you, but you also create value in your artwork by pushing further than the norm. And so it's, you know, it's a double-edged sword. Currently, I do uh, micro-portrait realism. I was working really long days. I was working like 11-hour days, 12-hour days, and it really started to get to me six hour, or six days a week, 11 hours, 12 hours, and, you know, it was just driving me crazy. I was at a convention. I had a cancellation, so one of my friends was like, hey, you know, I want to get something, you know, and I said, I have time for a small portrait, you know, and she was like, oh, what about a Mac or a Freddie Mercury? I was like, hell yeah, so we did a Mac Miller. I could put almost more time into that little tattoo and it not take 11 hours and be happier with that, the client would be happier. They're not spending as much, you know, because we're not spending as much time. Uh, so it just seemed like everybody was happy with it, you know, and it's been going really good. People are getting tattoos that I normally wouldn't be talking to because they're small, discreet, they can hide them. So uh, it's just kind of opened it up, you know, to a new client base as well, so that's pretty cool. I do single needle illustrational and more kind of woodcut, dry point, needle illustration style. I used to be an art teacher and I'm really into historic artworks, medieval, Victorian. Once I figured out how to do it on skin in a way that it looks good and heals good, um, I love doing it. It's classic, it's timeless. I love it and that's kind of how my whole body is. As far as my, my style of tattooing, I think it matches me personally. I'm always changing my look based on how I feel, you know what I mean? Um, it, my hair is always changing. Uh, I might show up to work in a button down and flats one day with a blazer and the next day like this. You know, it just. It just depends. I may want to do a portrait one day. The next day I'll do an illustrative wolf head. The day after that I'll do a Japanese piece. It's just like lettering after that. I, I think where I'm at now, it's not so much about uh, adaptability, but just versatility. But over the years, you just learn to go ahead and pass that stuff off if you can't do it because there are so many people that can't. Can. What's the and, fucking point? You know, even even in the town where, where I live, somebody would come in the shop and ask for something. I'd be Seven like, You street. need to go 
to this guy. And they're like, you don't want to make money? Of course I want to make money, but I'd rather you have a good tattoo. I don't have to take off my pants this time, do I? Yeah, this okay. is all it's off. Because right. last time, I saw you crying back there. I was, you all right? <laughs> Are you all right? It's just one of those days. I'll make it. Aaron's falling apart. He's got allergies today. Oh, I, dude, I feel you on that one, man. <laughs>